Welcome to HortTube. My name is Jim Putnam. This is the first Subscriber Sunday video. I'm going to put these up hopefully every Sunday. Uh, I'm going to put up some photos from hopefully subscribers in the future. Today I've got some pictures that I've taken recently that I'm going to put at the end of the video. But before I get to that, I'm going to answer a question or two every week a little more thoroughly. Questions that I've gotten repeatedly on videos over the course of the year that I've been putting up these videos. And I'm going to answer those, like I say, more thoroughly. One of the questions I get repeatedly is about heat tolerance of plants rather than cold tolerance. I always talk about how cold tolerant a plant is, and that's really only half the formula that goes into determining whether or not a plant will live in your area. You also have how many days that it's getting to near 90 or above, as well as does it get below zero in my area. If you combine those two pieces of information, you'll really know whether a plant will thrive in your area. So let me show you how to figure that out. So this is the USDA cold hardiness map. This is the average low temperatures for areas across the United States. If you can see my cursor right there, I'm in zone seven. And down here, if you look in the ledger, my average low temperature is between zero and 10 degrees. This map has been updated now, and these are divided into 7A and 7B, 6A and 6B. So there's some additional information. It goes by five degrees rather than 10 degrees now, but this, this map was very clear, so I wanted to use it. I'm in that area right here in zone seven. I'm actually almost in eight, so I'm in 7B. So if a plant will grow in horticultural zone seven, I should be fine. But I also need some additional information, and that information can be found on this map. This is the Horticultural Society's heat zone map, and this is the average number of days you're over 86 degrees. And I'm in this area in the southeast part of North Carolina, and I'm in zone eight, and I get between 90 and 120 days above 86 degrees, which, how do we use that information? Well, unfortunately, there's not a lot of websites that give you the heat zone information. This uh, Learn to Grow website actually does on most of their plants. This is a Nellie Stevens Holly that I looked up. I'll link this website at the bottom of this video. This is learntogrow.com. And if you come down here to the bottom, they actually have the heat zone and the USDA hardiness zone. And the USDA hardiness zone is six to nine, and I know I'm in seven, so I'm okay there. And on the heat zone, it says nine down to seven, and I know I'm in eight, so I'm good to go there. I'm gonna give you another example here uh, for me. Here's a lilac I'm gonna search for. Here's a variety of lilac called Miss Canada. I'm gonna open that up and come down to, oh, it says U.S. hardiness zone two to seven. Wow, this is a lilac that I can grow in my very hot area because, you know, I'm, like I say, I'm in zone seven, so no problem, right? Well, here's some additional information though. Here's the heat zone and it says seven down to one. Let's pull up that heat zone map. Seven is this green area right here. So everything from there and up, and I'm in this yellow area here. So although I'm in the proper area for the cold, it is too hot in my area to grow this plant. So as you can see, combining those two pieces of information together allowed me to determine that that plant is just not gonna grow in my area. It's gonna be too hot. It's gonna burn it out over the course of the summer. So go to this website, look up the plant, find the heat zone and the hardiness zone. Make sure you're in it for, there's the heat zone and there is the horticultural zone. I'll link these two maps and this Learn to Grow website in the bottom. And here's some photos I took in the last couple weeks. <music> 